Okay, got it. So thank everyone for joining us this uh, this evening. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I'll be taking it away from Mr. Osita. I know the last time we we dealt with uh, uh, security and storage, and uh, today we want to look at uh, cloud and virtualization. So that that is that. So basically, uh, let me share my screen. Okay. One minute, please. Uh, Mr. Sita, do you want to enable, oh, enable sorry, me for? Yeah. Sorry, sorry, yeah, go ahead, please. It's okay. Okay. Share my screen. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Can you can you see my screen, everyone? Mister Mister Izzy. Yes, we can. So go to display setting on top. Okay. Uh, display I think today I can't actually get the display settings. Yeah, it? it's not there today. I don't know. No, it's there. I can see it myself. Really? Yes. Look up. Look on top. On top, you you will see show tags bar, display settings. I'm not, end I'm, like you. I'm not seeing your cursor. Where is your cursor? Oh, see, yes, sorry. Yes, uh -huh. click on Sometimes that. Sometimes when you have multiple screen, it could be. I know, I know, <laughs> I know, I know. So how is it? Okay, first yeah. one, the first Good. one. Perfect. Awesome. I have it now, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So thank you, uh, yeah, Mr. Osita. So today we actually want to look at uh, virtualization and, and cloud, you know, basically, um, but the first thing I want us to look at is cloud. I mean, is virtualization because it's like a precursor to to cloud. What, what is virtualization and the, why exactly we we have it? Uh, like I said, maybe to maybe yesterday or two days ago, my my experience with virtualization was uh, was long time ago. Now in those days, what we do is that because we we line like I like to have two operating system. I love to have my my Linux operating system. I love to have my Windows for like you know things Windows, but things Linux. I really want to have it as well. But then I don't have money to buy two laptops, or maybe the luxury of getting two laptops. So what we we're taught by some of our mentors uh, is that we can actually boot a system either a laptop or a desktop. We can, we can install two operating system on them. In fact, some of my guys told me that they can, they can install up to four, but uh, then we were able to work with like two. That was, okay, we can install Windows, maybe Windows SP and Windows 7 on the same machine. And we can install Windows and Linux on the same machine and stuff like that. So what we do here is not just that we install it by doing some stuff, we install these two operating systems on the hard, hard disk, but we cannot use the same, op I mean, the two operating systems at the same time. That shows that at a time, even though we install maybe two or three, we can only use one at a time. So what we normally do is when the system is coming, when we power on our system and is booting up, we we'll press maybe F2 or F7 or F4 of you, it will drop us to like the menu and we we'll select which operating system we want to boot up. If it is the day we want to work with Windows, we boot Windows up. And if it's the day we want to work with Linux, we boot Linux up or up. And that was the tricks we used, you know, in the, in late, uh, let me say 2008, 2009, those years. We enjoyed it, it works for us. But as time goes on, 
we discover that there is need for us. Even I'm not talking about enterprise, I'm talking about individual users, personal usage. We discover that sometimes we want to run two operating systems at the same time. For instance, I want to install Windows Server, maybe Windows Server, you know, 2008 or 2003. And I want to install Windows 7. And I want to be able to run maybe Active Directory on the Windows Server and be able to configure the Windows 7 from the Active Directory and boot into the environment and see it working. These are typical examples. So that shows that we need, I need the two systems, the two operating systems to, to be working at the same time. So then virtualization came. We, I used to have this friend, we call him Mike, he's in Vietnam now. He brought this software and was like, John, come and see this. This is virtualization. This, is, this solves a lot of our problem. And I could remember in those days, we, get, we, we ran to his room and we begin to deploy it and we begin to test it out. So that helped us to be able to install like two, three, four, five, six, depending on the strength and capability like of our operating, I mean, of our hardware or, or, or specification of our, of our system. We can install like three or four operating systems and boot all of them up and make them interact with one another you know, without uh, shutting down one for another. So that was my, that was my, that was my first, you know, uh, gig with uh, virtualization. And since then, I, I have been using that. So if you look at that, so I talk about digital transformation because that is what cloud and virtualization has come up with. And since then we have, uh, we have virtualization, we have cloud, and we have containerization, but that is not where we are going tonight. So these are the things we want to look at tonight. I want to look at introduction to virtualization, you know, uh, basics of virtualization, benefit of virtualization, different between virtualization and cloud. Virtualization technologies, um, these are the basics we want to look at tonight. Now, why do we even talk about virtualization? You know, like why? But if you look at the story I've just said, it gives you an idea of why virtualization, the benefit it delivers. Yeah, the benefit it delivers. So virtualization is technology that lets you create useful IT services using resources that are traditionally bound to hardware. Now, if you look at this word, if you look at this word that are traditionally bound to hardware, This place is very important to me. If you look at the story I've just said, initially in those days before virtualization, every operating system must be installed or run upon a, a traditional hardware, like hard disk, like you know, RAM or, or what have you. It must be bound to that. There's no way you can do it. But virtualization helps you you know, have you, have you create such resources these days without naturally have it bound to the hardware? Now, what kind of virtualization do we, do we talk about? Like types of virtualization. We have data virtualization. We have desktop virtualization. We have server virtualization. We have principal virtualization. And we have network functions virtualization. This, that shows that you can go about virtualizing anything anything. This day we start, you know, initially the purpose of virtualization was made to virtualize our servers. I could remember in those days, I, I don't know whether I said this two days ago, I was in, on a project and I got an HP server, you know, rack it, you know, you know in those days we, we used to do everything ourselves. So I was into this project, I had to go and procure, you know, servers, you know, rack, mount it, do everything. Do you know what I was using this server for? I was using it for a database. I, I deploy an enterprise database on it, a whole server. So it turns out that I supposed to install database server on HP 
rack, I mean HP server, then buy another server, install application server or web server on the another server on another HP server, then buy another server, install uh active directory, you know, on the other server. That makes it three servers. Each one of them, I could remember in those days, I was buying maybe like 1.2 or 1.5 million. So that is a lot of money. Mind you, buying these servers and putting them for maybe database, dedicated for database alone, or application server alone, it all goes down, boils down to the fact that those servers are underutilized. Because it is it, it's, it's underutilized, but because we want to isolate database from application server, from from maybe you know Active Directory server, we buy different hardware. We wasted a lot of money. So one of the things that virtualization has helped us to do is that it helps us to what to maximize the usage of our hardware. That shows that with a single hardware server, we can use virtualization software to virtualize that server and deploy maybe five servers on a single hardware. How do we accomplish it? is by what we call hypervisor. Now, if you can look, if you can see my screen, you will see this image here. If you can hear me, or you can see this, somebody on the platform can, can just unmute and say, yes, we see that. Yes, yes I can see it. Yes, yes. Good. yes. Good. good. So here, this is the hardware. This is the hardware. This, these are the servers, the hardware servers, the server hardware. Now, the hypervisor sit on top of the hardware. So, with the help of this hypervisor, which is a, a, a piece of software, it helps you to virtualize this hardware to multiple servers. This is server one, this is two. This is three, this is four. Okay, based on my story before this virtualization, how many server do you think would have been here, would have been, you know, traditionally, if not for hypervisor or, or virtualization, how many servers do you think will have been able to deploy here? Oh, one. Maybe two. Oh. One. Oh, one. One. Yes, it will have been one. Okay, wait a second. Okay. Yeah, it will have been one. That shows that every hardware to one, every hardware, I mean, one server hardware to one so, I mean, software server server. One server hardware to one software server. That is ratio one to one. That is the way it used to be. Either you use it to the maximum or not. It will just be there, wasting. So organizations were spending money. In fact, I could remember the first time I was setting up Active Directory DNAs and all those things those days, Microsoft will write it on the documentation that don't deploy Active Directory and DNA server on the same machine. So what they are saying is that have different servers for it, for production environment. Whereas those machines are too much. They, are, they have more resources. So they are, it's like they are too much for some small organizations to just have them dedicated like that. So with this, a lot of things were, were, you know, were getting wasted, a lot of manpower, you had to employ a lot of people to do that. So when, when with this technology, you can maximize that output. So it, it can, you can get server, you can do desktop virtualization. You can do operating system virtualization. I was working in one bank in this country and we were virtualizing our, our, our operating system. I can't remember the name we used to call it then. We, we have some, some virtualization we did on, you know, in some data centers that we don't need to, we don't, we just use our local operating system to connect to the operating system and we do our job. When we finish it, we don't have any of our data, only any of the bank's data in our environment, in my look machine. So they keep everything up there. So those are the things we call operating system virtualization. I am trying to make it read to you, not just a theory, but something that you can relate with in a real world. 
And uh, at this point, I would like to show you something. Uh, okay, you can discard that. Oh, I think my system got restarted. Okay, can you see my screen here? Yes, we can. Okay, now if you look at it, this is actually, look at me now, this is Windows 10 I'm using here. But look at this software. This is a virtualization software. I installed it on my Windows 10. You can see the icon here. So when I open it, I have three servers here. I have Kali, 2000, I mean, Kali Linux 2021, I have Ubuntu, and I have uh, Linux, Black Tech, you know, another server. This is three, these are three servers. If you look at this, I can actually run this up for you. Let me run this up for you. So that you see that it's another, it's really an operation system, not that uh, maybe, maybe I'm just saying it. Now, this software that you see here that we call, uh, that we call Oracle Virtual Boss, you can see Virtual Boss 6.1, it's a virtualization software by a particular company. But what you need to understand is that there is, what happened here is that the virtual boss installed an hypervisor, you know, that allows me to, up, to install another operating system on top of my own host operating system. So what hypervisor or virtualization have you to do is to install another operating system upon another operating system. So whether one is going on, if you have any, if you have question or what have you, maybe you want to raise your hand by using the reaction button. Maybe there's something that you, you are not clear about. Just let me know. Uh, I was just going to ask if this type of deployment or installations, is it done in all types of computers? Like for example, this Ubuntu now. Okay. Um, is it done in every types of laptops? Or I mean, how do you do it? Yeah. So you want to you you mean to say is yeah, is, is this capability enabled in maybe laptops or desktop or what have you? Yes, that's correct. Yes. Yes, I can tell you that 98 to 99 percent of modern computers. You know, okay. can do can run this stores, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you can see now this is another operating system. So that shows that I can minimize this. And you still have my Windows 10 here. And I still have my Ubuntu server here or desktop here or whatever. So the idea is that I have been able to maximize the usage of my laptop, you know more than what it used to be. Now that shows that organizations can say, okay, let us buy a server. Let's install, we need this, we have a server, a hardware. We went to HP or IBM or what have you. We bought a server there and we bring it to our data center. And we install, you know, virtualization software on it. So today we need a database. We need to spin up a database server. We spin it up, maybe running on Red Hat Linux. And tomorrow IT department says, hey, we need another server maybe for DNS, internal DNS. And instead of the, the management or the organization to like become, you know, panic and say, how do we get this done? The next thing is that, the, they just spin up another server, right? So this one, instead of in those days that's okay, they have to make in, you know, making ticket, make a request, get approval, uh, get, you know, make order from IBM or, or HP or Dell or what have you. And it takes like maybe one month or two months to deliver the hardware server. Then things get delayed. They, they cannot, you know, work, they cannot produce, or maybe 
they cannot work as within a, a very limited time timeline. Now, let me give you a typical example of the implication of that. For instance, let's assume we have a uh, Emmanuel, Uneka, and Kaman. They are into the same business. Maybe they are into logistics business. And uh, all of them, they are competitors. Let's assume Uneka is very smart and he has an advantage like if customer people are complaining that I want, I want, I want to be able to track you know, my shipment. And you know, customers are complaining. I don't just want people to, I want to know where my, my shipment, where it's coming from, when it's going to be delivered. I want to be able to track it. And Uneka was able to develop a system and roll it out. Maybe within just one month that people are demanding for it. But Emmanuel and Kamar takes maybe three or four months to do that. You know that Uneka has been able to beat the, beat the other two competitors to the market. Even before they realize it must have maybe capture maybe 50% of the market share before Emmanuel and Kama, you know, get to market. So what we're talking about here in the real sense, in, in, in value chain, you know, perspective is that what kind of technology do we have that we allow entrepreneurs and innovators to get to market real quick, to have their solutions, you know, available being used by, you know, by, by users really, really quick. So you can see with every story and with every explanation I've made, you see that virtualization will help you to do that better. It helps you to do that better. So it can, it, like I said, it depends on what you want to virtualize. It depends. So how does virtualization work? Virtualization is made, of a, is made possible by software layer core hypervisor. This software abstracts the resources of its host system. I just explained that. Whether that is CPU, GPU, memory storage, or what have you, what it does is that it just abstracts the resources of its host system. In my own case, my host system is Windows 10. So what the virtualized software happens to do, did here is that it abstract that. It abstract the CPU, the storage, the disk space, the network, everything. It just, in fact, it just abstract it. Just abstract it. And then I can allocate them among a number of virtual machines. So those things you see then like Kali Linux, Ubuntu, uh, Black Tech or what have you, they are all, we call them virtual machines. They call, we call them VMs, you know. Each VMs function as a single data file on the whole system and can easily move from one system to another. Uh, this too becomes so popular among we people that are doing training. For instance, in those days when we do training and we install some things on our system and it doesn't work the way we expect, maybe we are not expert yet, we messed up our system. You know, sometimes we have to restore our system and things like that. With virtualization, if you are practicing something as a learner, and then somehow maybe you mistakenly delete what you are not supposed to delete, you didn't mess up anything, or you just need to do this to remove that VM and install another one. We've done it today. We have some classes today with uh, DevOps. We have yesterday when, when my, my colleagues say, John, this thing is not working. I said, remove it and uh, redo it again. But if, if, if it were to be installed on the operating system right away, it will not be that easy. It will not be that easy. So these are the, these are the benefits that virtualization brings to the table. Okay, partitioning. So these are the values. Like number one, it's, it's partitioning. It's like it allows you to run multiple operating systems on one physical machine. I've said that. Divide system resources between virtual machines, yeah. So these are the things, these are the things virtualization brought to the table. Isolation, provide fault and security isolation. I just said that. If you have problem with one virtual machine, you can remove it. It doesn't mess with the other ones. Preserve performance with advanced resource control. Now, if you look at me here, let me do something here. This particular point, I think is very, very important. This one preserve performance with advanced yeah, resource control. Let me show you something here. 
Let me show you something here. If you look at this, okay. If you look at this, let me click on this. What do you see here? Under this, under this system, you see four MB here. Now this four MB is the RAM of this Kali Linux. If I want to increase it, I have control via it. I can move it up here and down. That should, the reason why you see it on 4 MB here is because this Kali Linux, I'm not using it now. So instead of it to just sit down there using up memory or probably getting, not using it up, getting memory allocated to read, even when it's not, when it's not being used right now, I deallocate resources from this guy. I deallocate resources from this guy. This is the one that is running now. I allocate resources. You can see this one is nine GB, is nine gig. So now this is the one that is running. This is the one I'm using. What virtualization happens to do is to deallocate resources from those ones I'm not using and allocate them to the ones I am using. So that, that is, is, is that simple, it's practical. This is the one I'm using. Yeah. So encapsulation, save the entire state of a virtual machine to file. Move and copy virtual machine as easily as moving. Yeah, this one, let me just, let me just explain this to you. You know, I can save the state of my file. For instance, if I mean of my virtual machine, for instance, when I configure, let's assume I'm like, Osita is an SAP guy. SAP is very difficult to configure. It's an enterprise resource planning software. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of energy, a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff to do. So let's assume I spin up a virtual machine for SAP configuration. And I don't, if anything ever happened, I want to have like a, a, a clean copy, something that I can always revert back to. When I finish configuring and everything is fine, it's clean, it's good, I can save the state. I can, I can export the state, export it, you know, like binaries out of that VMware and save it somewhere, maybe in, in external hard disk. And should in case I have need, maybe something went wrong, instead of me starting all over again to reconfigure SAP, I can just import that one that I saved with clean state and everything, I can import it back as a new server. Let's assume I want to make several copies of the server. I want to have like maybe like, like redundancy, like, okay, I want to, I can just configure once, then export it and duplicate it to several copies. So it saves a lot of a lot of time, and that is what you call we call encapsulation. Then the last one is hardware independence. Provision or migrate any virtual machine to any physical server. Like I just said up here, you can migrate any virtual machine to any other server. Like I said, you can export it on the on the machine and go and import it on the other machine. On the other machine. Okay, let me show you something here. We, I don't know, hopefully we still, we still have it like we used to have it in those days. It's been a long time I, I checked that. Can you see my browser? Yes. yes. Okay, okay. Let me see if I can see, I used to have um, some, uh, okay, good look like maybe we still have them there okay you see this place you see these pages you see they are maintained by oracle technology i'm not trying to you know they are just don't worry just listen to me i just want to make a point for you okay you see here what oracle did here is that they install a vm a virtual machine I mean, they created a virtual machine. They now install Linux on it. They install database on it. 
they install all these tools, like, like you see it here, they install all these things on it. They now package it together, they export it. They now make it available here. So if you go here and you download it, like here, now if you download it, and you go after downloading it, you now come to this place. Oh, sorry. Uh, you now come to this place, like on your own. You can say, okay, here, and say import. What Oracle puts on that place, I can import it here. And all those tools, everything you have there, it will become, it will become like a VMware on my own machine. So it makes the installation and the configuration of those things easier. If this one, the way I did this now, for instance, the way I configured this, maybe I want, I want Oscar or Chichi to have it. I can, I can go here and I say export. I can export this. I'll just go next, next, I'll export it and I'll copy it in a flash drive. I will send it to, to, to Chichi and Chichi will import. And the same thing I have here, she will have it. So you can see the beauty of this virtualization. But what are we trying to get at is the fact that I don't just want to see, you, see it as technology that you just need to learn, no. I just need to get information about it. Is the value it brings to business? Is the value it brings to tech guys like you, who manage and maintain infrastructure in data centers, in in security, in application provisioning. It helps us to do more with less. It helps us to reduce wastage. Yeah. It helps us to do that. So. Yeah, yeah, um, John, one, one second. Okay. Great, great. I mean, I'm, I'm a fan of virtualization, cloud computing, trust me, any day, any time. Especially from business perspective, oh. go to market is key. Yeah. In this time and age, you do smell, smell. You are out of the market. Yeah. <laughs> Go and ask Yahoo. <laughs> Go and ask uh, Nokia. Yeah. Go and ask uh, Blackberry. Yeah. I can, you know, go on and on. Competition is the order of the day. Mm. Organizations want things fast. And that is why Agile. DevOps, anything that will help organization to automate, build agility. Mm -hmm. That is that is the end thing now. I love this. I just want us to pause here a little while yeah. and get, you know, so remember this program is for the newbies. Yeah. For anyone here that you have already become Baba, please, this session is not for you. <laughs> <laughs> we want to make sure that the newbies are able to understand mm -hmm. and internalize these things. Yeah. So please, guys, raise up your hands. We are going to be taking five questions and John will continue afterwards. If that, that you don't understand. Yeah. Visualization. It was asking, why do you even need multiple server? Yes. And I all those kind question. of questions. Yeah. Please, remember, as I told you guys, I'm not going to be reading from the chat tonight. I want, <laughs> I want you guys to speak. Yeah. So use the reaction button, raise your hands, and you will get to speak. Yeah. Pascal, please unmute yourself and go for it. OK, um, thank you for the opportunity. So I've actually had a question. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yes, um, I've actually um, the opportunity to use um, RODP on okay. my Windows machine okay. um, in a while, but VirtualBox, it seems like it's a very new technology to me. So I want to understand how does this particular VirtualBox differ from RODP? Yeah. 
Okay. Um, or are they the same thing? Um, how do they actually work? Okay. Then my second question would be, um, now that you have two different um, virtual machines or mm -hmm. let's say systems mm -hmm. um, running on your on your machine, mm -hmm. is it possible for you to copy files without mm -hmm. having to like, as in copying files with their storage mm -hmm. through your storage among the dif different um, machines, different uh, VMs that you have mm -hmm. without having to upload to a cloud and then download in the other one? Like, mm -hmm. is it possible for you to like copy files from one VM to another directly okay. without having to upload to a cloud? That's my question. Okay, so let me answer that first, please. Uh, Pascal, that, those are very, very good questions. Number one is that you talk about RDP. This is a remote uh, desktop, I mean, desktop, uh, you know, procedure, procedure call, what have you. Now, RDP is what we use, is, is a client, is a thin client, you know, that we use to remotely connect to a remote server or remotely connect to another server. So for instance, uh, you can use in my Windows 10 environment, you can use RDP to connect to maybe my Ubuntu server that you saw. RDP is not an environment, it's not an isolated environment of VM itself. It's just a, a, a thin client environment you use to connect from one system to another. So mind you, the system you want to connect to must be available. So that shows that when you create multiple servers using virtual, I mean, virtualization or virtual machines like that, then you can now use RDP to connect with them remotely. Currently, what, you are, your, envir what your environment or what you are familiar with is that you have a server somewhere in a remote, remote location, maybe you don't even know. But the server, even the server you have, maybe, okay, you have it in a remote location, you don't know. Good. And you are aware that if you use RDP, maybe to, you know, connect to the, using the IP address or the host name, you get access to the server. That is what you know, that is what you are aware of now. You don't even know the physical structure or nature of that server. Whether that server is even running on virtual machine, you don't know. And whether it's running on a physical hardware, you don't know. Yes, which, which, is, non, which is none of our business anyway. Like even me, if, I'm, if I were in your shoe, as long as I can connect to the server and I can do my stuff, no problem. But there is possibility that that server you are connecting to is so even running on a, on a virtual machine. And it may be running on a hardware, direct hardware machine. So... RDP is just for you to connect to a remote server, either on a physical hardware or on a virtualized hardware. That answers that, that one, yeah. Then the second one talks about, uh, can you remind me the second one again, please? Yeah, being able to um, copy files directly. Okay, good, one. yeah, okay, good, thank you. So you can share file between your host operating system and all these virtual, uh, uh, virtual buses like VM, I mean virtual bus. You can you can share files. Let me let me see if I can get something here. Uh, where are you? Okay, I used to have a, a file here that I call. You see this 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 folder. This folder I just opened, right? You know, yes. I call it VM share. I configured this folder to share files among my virtual buses. Sometimes like these files, I, I, I brought them from some Linux machine. These are, these are like job work. I, this, these are production environment work that I, that I imported into this place. So there is the normal way we share, because like Pascal, they are, they are, they are real systems. The number which you share file within system, between systems, you can share file among them. For instance, you can assign them IP addresses. And in as much that you can do that, you can assign them IP addresses. What else? Look at network, look at your NIC card here. These are adapters. You know something now? These are adapters, these are network adapters. This one is not. 
I can change it to bridge, you know, host only, all these things you see, there is a whole course on virtualization networking. I don't want to take you there tonight. How do we network a virtualized environment? There are a whole new, new, new course on it, like you do that you make, you make sure that's okay, you can configure, assign IP address, make sure the kind of maybe not, maybe bridge, maybe host only, they be, I mean, behave differently depending on the network configuration you do. So to answer your question straight, you can share files among them and, and that's it. I hope this satisfied that question. Yes, it does. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Next one. Okay, Abel. Thank you, John. Um, my you. question is, um, is the, like uh, Osita called us, uh, newbies. We have been following your training on uh, virtualization today. Mm -hmm. And then I got confused at the point and then it um, arose a question. And the question is, all this virtualization we're trying to do. Are they still tapping from the overall storage capacity of the laptop? As an exactly. Example? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so once I do my virtualization, I'm mm -hmm. actually like sharing my my storage yes. to different um, servers. Um, let's say servers. I put yes. Now. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. what purpose we did now serve? Me? Okay. Good. So the purpose number one is that let's assume that you have a laptop that is having maybe 1,000 terabyte of storage and uh, having maybe 32 GB of memory like RAM. Okay, now if you are just using it with Windows 10 or Windows 11, that is shows that you are like more, and you needed to run multiple servers, maybe for your training or maybe for your test environment or what have you. You need to run multiple servers. So they will not tell you, okay, go and buy another laptop for this because you need to install maybe uh, Red Hat, you need to do that. So now it's having the purpose as, okay, instead of you wasting that resource sitting down there without being utilized, that's why you can utilize it more now. You can, you, can, you, can, you, you, can, you can spread the storage across multiple operating system of your choice for particular purpose. The RAM, you can share it among multiple, you know, operating systems and do whatever you want with it. For instance, you might, have a kid, you might have a son who likes coding, who wants to install some, some crazy softwares and you don't want him to mess with your, with your own. You can create a virtual, a, virtual, I mean, a, a, a virtual boss for him, install all his tools there and tell him, hey, if you want to come and work on my system, always go here and do your stuff. You might have your wife, even I'm talking about the home use now, that maybe she's into architecture, she doesn't want anybody to mess with, I mean, mess with our stores, then you create one for her. And those things are there. So everybody comes and use their own and keep it clean and nothing get to us to interfere with, with so any, John, anyone. So John, what's different between this, this concept of virtualization mm -hmm. and having uh, different users on my laptop? Good. Different user doesn't give you isolation the way virtualization gives you. Do you understand my point now? It doesn't give you isolation. It doesn't give you, as, I mean, encapsulation. It doesn't give you the, the hardware independence. It doesn't give you partitioning. You understand my point now? It doesn't give you that. It only give you like access control. Like, okay, if you are not, yeah, it only does what it does give you. But when it comes to like some real level of isolation, like partitions, it doesn't give you that. They are still, they are, if you look at the file system, you still see that their program file is still the same program file. You understand? Know I mean? So the kind of abstraction that having different users create is not the same thing as having a virtual machine. Yeah. Good Thank question. You. Good question. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very good question. Yeah, Abel. Good question. Yes. Yeah. Because when you have different users, just like John mentioned, each user can log in with their ID, right? They will log in and be able to do stuff. But everything that they are doing is still going to be resident on one hard drive, yeah. one laptop, you know, sharing the same operating mm -hmm. system. Yeah. But when you virtualize, you are completely giving independence. Yeah. Both are the 
are the are the surface and also at the hard disk and hard drive level. Mm -hmm. So Abel, when you give when you have different users, it is just at the surface level. Let me use that word surface. It's not going into the operating system or program files. That's what it's called program files in the system. So it's just at the surface. But for you to create that complete difference. Isolation. Isolation. Yeah. Because if you have two users, let me talk about installation of files. Me and you, we are using the same laptop. I can use that laptop and install a software using my user account. Mm -hmm. okay. That software that I install will be on that laptop. You too, you can log in, install another software. It will still be on that laptop. The same program file, file system, yeah. hard drive. But when I virtualize the software I install, you, you will not see it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. If you log in with your user account, you won't see the new software that mm -hmm. I have installed yeah. because it is complete isolation. It's like a detached, detached house. I mean, in my house, you're in your house. But when you have different accounts, it's like face me, I face you. <laughs> you know, that's that we that we that we see in Lagos or some places back in Africa. Mm -hmm. That is still it's not complete isolation. If I come out from my house, I can still see you. But I might yeah. not see everything you are doing. Yeah. But there are other things I can still see. Yeah. <laughs> like when we go to the backyard to hang our clothes. <laughs> you know, as I'm hanging my clothes, you're hanging your own. So does that make sense? But that's it a does. very, a it very does. good question. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Chichi, 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 please go for it. Thank you very much, Mr. Osita and Mr. John, for this session. My question is, is there a difference between virtual machine and virtual box or they are synonymous? They are synonymous. Uh, now, when you talk about virtual box, like, uh, let me just say, you know, there are names like uh, we, we normally use in the industry. You know, when virtualization came, virtualization was a product, or let me say it's the product of, uh, of open source community. Now, when you talk about open source community, these are, these are community that develop software with the purpose of, you know, sharing resources free of charge. Like people don't like the way things are. People begin to develop a program and talk to another developer and they contribute code, they put it together and it comes together like that. So it was, it was a, a product of, you know, open source community and project. And then one of the first uh, in open source technology, you know, sometimes you will ask yourself that why will somebody spend hours writing code days, months, and just give it out free. So I could remember I did a course in those days in school that talks about making money out of open source. So one of the things they do is if a, an open source technology is developed, Chichi, I'm still coming back, I'm still coming back to your question, but I want to give it a, a very good granting. If, so, if an open source software is developed and they give it out free, most of the time it's always very difficult to maintain you need expertise. So what people do sometimes is that those guys, they provide support. Like, okay, if you are using something free, then we can help you maintain, manage it, and you know, take care of it, then you pay us. So with that, that was what was happening. Then there are companies like VMware. VMware is a company. So they begin to, they begin to develop like build function. Take that open source software, of, of uh, virtualization, I begin to build on top of it. Like, okay, add some functionality, make it like, you know, make it fancy, make it, you know, and offer support. And they now call it VMware. Okay, then Oracle came, another, another company, they did the same thing. They called their own virtual boss, Oracle, Oracle virtual boss, boss. So now, if we are talking in the context, if 
maybe I'm the guy that uses uh, you know uh virtual VMware a lot. I can be saying oh uh, virtual machines, you know, and stuff like that. And if I'm the guy that uses Oracle, like I'm talking about virtual bus. But you know, sticking to the industry, something that is very popular in the industry, every machine you create out of these virtualization softwares, we call them VMs, virtual machines. That is the standard. That is standard. But you can see some people saying virtual buses or what have you. It's not really standard. It's kind of you know more or less like proprietary name creeping into the naming convention. But the standard is virtual buses. Like I have two or three virtual. I mean, sorry, virtual machines. I have like two or three virtual machines. So I will advise that you stick more with virtual machines. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Good. So excellent. Question. Great question. So let's take more. Okay, we have two, three hands. Mm. Um, guys, let's make it quick. Yeah. Uh, Kemi, go for it. Hi, uh, I'm just going to go back a little bit um, to still ask about the difference between virtualization and users. Would you say that virtualization, virtualization helps in maintaining the speed of the computer? Because if you have like different users using the computer, and you upload different um, applications, it kind of mm -hmm. slows down the computer. Mm -hmm. So does virtualization, does it slow down the computer like the way users also do? Yeah, uh, we even say that uh, uh, users don't slow down, having multiple users, I don't think we slow down the system as virtualization we do, right? But we are talking about uh enterprise environment here like if you have multiple users it depends on what they installed like okay so we can just create maybe multiple users on your account that maybe they're just 25s they're just they're just you know using it for maybe office work like typing documents and making documents and stuff like that so that kind of environment is going to be very light no heavy you know job is running and the resources is not going to be consumed that much yeah but if you, if they, if individual users now in that environment begin to install like heavy softwares, it can slow down the system. But in the case of virtualization, every virtual machine that you created, you are taking out of the overall resources, be it RAM or storage, you are taking it, taking out of it and use it for a new system at top of that. One of the core values of virtualization is that we don't want to waste resources in a simple language. If we have a server hardware or a particular system that can that is having some resources that we are not using, we are not maximizing, why can't we run two of it on it and maximize it? So the answer to your question is that the virtualization of having two or multiple users on his computer, you know, answers to different or solve different problems like we said but it all depends on what you run on the system for users multiple users for it to maybe consume more it has to be like okay different users are you know are installing heavy software at a particular time and for virtualization too the more you have vmware's i mean virtual machines the more you have resources used up and stuff like that okay thank you you're welcome Excellent. Great, great. So TJ, sorry, no, Martin, Martin, go for it. Yeah, thank you so much for the explanations you have given so far for the clarity. But I'm a newbie myself. Mm -hmm. I just want you to take us through how to go about this virtualization. Like mm -hmm. I'm using a, a Mac operating system and I want to install maybe a, a a Windows operating system on it. So okay. I don't know, how do I go about that? I know you are just taking us through this that we want to see practical just for the sake of knowing how, how it is done. Or okay. I don't know if that can be for another class. I, don't know. Uh, I think at the end of this class, I have something, I have a link that uh, I will provide and I will, maybe towards the end, I will do some something that can, you know, bootstrap you. Yeah, something that you can piggyback on to, to do those things yourself. But that being said, don't worry, let's just move through. So can we go to TJ now? 
Uh, thank you very much for the great job you're doing. My question is uh, similar to what Martins asked. Uh, a few days back, I was trying to uh, create a virtual machine on my operating system for the first time. It's uh, Centros, okay. and I ran into a problem. Okay. I downloaded a uh, VM Windows player, okay. trying to use it and all that, but I couldn't get through. Okay. So I was hoping if you could do uh, yeah, dialogue. I have some resources that I intend to share with. I mean, like with us at the end of this uh, this class, and uh, give you some guideline on even if you cannot do a total stuff, um, but at least something that will get you started. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Demi Ladi. Okay. Yes, thank you. Um, okay. can anyone hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, we can. All right. Um, my question is. The graphics vary. If you have a computer with very low graphics, I mean, mm -hmm. low RAM or all that stuff, mm -hmm. would it vary? As in, like, if Windows 11, you need certain graphics to upgrade it, does the same thing apply to the to your computer if you're trying to install? Yeah, if I understand you correctly, is that uh, you are making a point that uh, graphics for you know div individual operating system varies, and uh, if I, we are now installing maybe such operating system on VMware, I mean on virtualization, does that still you know I mean apply? Is that correct? Hello, Demiladi, are you there? Oh, Hello. sorry. Yes, it does. Okay. Yeah, that's the question. Okay, so what I will say is that number one thing at the back of your mind, all of us, is that every virtual machine is a separate operate is a separate system on its own. Just have that mindset as okay. Every like that shows that when I show you my system, and I have three virtual machines there, I, that shows that I have three 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 systems three systems. Now, those three systems, they behave the same way they will behave, even if they are sitting directly on hardware. So the graphics, the RAM, the storage is still the same. If, the, if, what, if Ubuntu is maybe taking up more graphics memory in, when it's sitting on hardware directly, now that it's sitting on a VMware, I mean, on a virtual machine, it's still going to take up that uh, graphics memory. Still the same thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh -oh. Yeah, I think you answered the questions. Yes, yes, please. I think we'll, we'll, let's, let's proceed. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So, virtualization versus cloud computing. Now, you know, when we started this class, I, you know, I, I said a lot of story because I was trying to lay a very good foundation of where uh, I was going and where eventually I will end up. So, because I told you the story of, you know, installing operating system on like normal thing we do, like our hard drive. And a time came that we have to install, you know, another operating system on another operating system. Now, we we are we are here now talking about cloud computing, you know. So virtualization is software that makes computing environment independent of physical infrastructure. Why cloud computing is a service that delivers shared computing resources. Uh, I want us to to look at this properly. We said, why cloud? Why cloud? Why cloud is a service. Mm -hmm. Via internet. If you look at that place, um, why cloud computing is a service that delivers shared computing resources, software or, or data on demand via internet. I want to ask uh, Mr. I know somebody 
was it Mr. Okun that asked that question the first time or who? That talks what? about the uh, uh, difference between users and the uh, and virtualization. Who was that? Uh, Mr. Abel, right? Uh, I think it's Abel, yes. Okay. Yes, Abel. Yes, okay. Sir. Can you show your face so that uh, you can see our face, face to face? Okay, Mr. Mr. Abel is coming up, Abby. So let's look at this. We have, uh, for some of us, we, we know what cloud computing is all about now. Uh, we, if you, have, if you have an idea of what cloud computing is all about, can you just raise your hand? I just want to know the number of people that have a, have an idea of what cloud computing is all about. Maybe you've read about it, you have some graphs. Okay. I cannot see people yet. Okay, I have, uh, I have some people. Wow. You have a limited number of people. Don't Sorry, you have... I, I didn't raise my hand, but... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't know if I'm right that Mr. Osita told us it's like renting a space. To okay, good. Whatever. Good. So we have some people here. Exactly. It's like right, renting a space, you know, like renting it. You rent your house. You only pay for the for the one month you rent. Airbnb. So internet. Yeah, Airbnb <laughs> on the internet. Yeah, on 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 server resources or, or infrastructure IT resources. Okay, let's look at this, Mr. Ibe. Uh, yes. We we have like everybody should know that we have some big players, technology companies that are providing cloud services. Yes. We have Microsoft. We have Google. We have uh, Amazon, Amazon. We, have, we have Alibaba, you know, we, we have a lot of them. We have a uh, digital ocean. These are the ones that we have their names, you know, they are big guys, play, players mm -hmm. in the industry. But we have a lot of smaller, smaller companies too that you don't even aware of, but they still provide cloud services and stuff like that. Now, I want to ask Mr. Ebe now, I want him to, to just use that question to like, you know, see us through this explanation. How do you think AWS, like Amazon, is selling us storage? Or let me see, some of us are using Google, Google Drive, right? Okay, how do you think they are selling us those storage? If Mr. Osita sign up for Google Storage and Google, or maybe OneDrive, Microsoft OneDrive, and the only the, the immediately sign up, they now set up a server for you, for Mr. Osita. They set up a server for Demilade, they set up a server for Mary Lynn, and everybody like that. Do you think they will be able to make money in that business? No, that would be too expensive. That would be too expensive. That is the right language. So what they do is this. Let's now take it further. Let's assume that Microsoft Azure, when maybe a bank, maybe when a TD bank signed up for Microsoft Azure, they now set up, they now set up a, a server for them, maybe two or three servers. Then a national bank set, I mean, ask for some distance, they set up servers for them. And maybe another company, maybe Canadian, you know, Canada Revenue Agency ask for the setup. What do you think tomorrow? Did you just say, okay, I'm no more using this server? What do you think will happen to those servers? Uh, they will become redundant and it will be a big, a big loss to the provider. Exactly. So now moving forward of that analogy, what if Microsoft and Google or, AW, or Amazon, AWS. what if they were using virtual virtualization? And they will just um, close that part. I to see they still have their resources intact. They still have their resources. That's so that they can install multiple servers on their hardware. And yes. if today they give it to a guy or sitter and he pay maybe like two days and he says don't use this anymore, they just delete. They just delete and recreate yes. another one and give it to another person. So that is to tell you that at the back end of what we call cloud computing today, the back end of it. Is, is, is backed by virtualization, virtualization. technology. Wow. Does that make sense to everybody now? 
Yes. So you can see the layer. You know, you can see how we are moving from one layer to the other, from one layer to the other. So that is what virtualization is. What it has offered big enterprise to do that. Even, even like individual companies were doing that. I work in places whereby we have data centers, you know, later with a lot of virtualization. Do you not know what organizations are now doing? Even with that virtualization, that they have it before, it time came that they became like, what if we can, we can get more? So the organi organizations, individual organization doesn't want to do the wall over. You see, at a point, the organization was good to them, but at the point they feel like, I still need to reduce the time to market. Virtualization has, virtualization has cut the time to market maybe from one year to just three months. Everybody was happy in the last 10 years, you know, 15 years. But the time came that, okay, I don't even want to, I don't want to, I don't have time for three months to get to market. Can I get to market within a week? Do you understand my point, sir? Everybody, do you understand my point? So now, yes. how can I get to market within a week? In fact, some people want to get to market within a day. Where I work presently, we get to market within a day. If there is a feature we want to release a day, we want to develop it in a day and release it in a day, we can do that. Then how do we do that? Then on top of this virtualization, when cloud providers give us virtualization, then we now build what we call containerization upon it. That is not within the scope of our course. But I'm just trying to tell you that what virtualization has, what, has given to us is evolving. So we said, why cloud computing is a service that delivers shared computing resources. We can share it. Instead of it to be redundant in AWS or maybe in your, in your, in your data center, you go to AWS, you buy what you can, you rent or you, you rent what you want. AWS has everything, the same thing. They just rent it out. So we share it. On the same physical server, two different companies can be sharing the same physical server when they are dealing with AWS, but they won't even know. Because that isolation, a partition that I was talking about, is more, is more robust here. That even when two, come, two, even two banks that wouldn't have done business together, you know, having their, their, their resources you know, residing on the same physical server, they wouldn't have allowed that, but because they don't even know how it happens at the back end. But those big, you know, technology company, they will have, they have able to use virtualization te technology to create that abstraction, to create that partition, that isolation, and ensure that everybody is secured and everybody is fine, and we keep moving. Does that interest, does that make sense? Yes. Good. So as complementary solution, organizations can begin by virtualizing their servers and they're moving to the cloud computing for even greater agility and self-services. So when you talk about agility here, we just want to be fast. We just want to be flexible. We just want to, to move very fast and do things you know, iteratively and not necessarily being stuck by one reason or the other. OK. Now, I want us to look at this small stuff I have here, uh, virtualization and cloud. What is, virtualization is a technology, but cloud is a methodology. That shows that cloud use a technology called virtualization, whereas in its own, it's a methodology, a way of, you know, doing things, a way of, you know, achieving results. Virtualization creates multiple simulated environment from one physical hardware, I've said this. Cloud provide a pool of shared resources requested and released on demand via self-service. So you can see the connection between all my explanation, all this why. Virtualization is used for delivery of package resources to specific user for specific purpose. But cloud deliver variable resources to a group of users. That's you can see that if virtualization is like this, then what cloud does is to take it further, make it more granular. If a particular user cannot buy a single virtual bus, I mean VMware, 
I mean, sorry, uh, virtual machine. If a particular user doesn't need a whole virtual machine, cloud computing will allow you to share, we provide a virtual machine that is set to maybe 10 users that need, you know, small, small chunk. And everybody will still do is our business and be fine. Configuration is image based. On the cloud is template based. Now this is where it gets good when it comes to business. For those of us that are into accounting, what is CAPES and what is OPES? Capital expenditure and operating expenditure. Good. In fact, when we started, when we started uh, with, you know, with uh, with uh, cloud, these are the words uh, we used to have. We used to we used to hear those days. You know, we because for me, I don't know Jack Jack in finance, where I know how to count my money. So. <laughs> <laughs> so when we are in those meetings and these grammars are coming in, those they are like, what? What is CAPES? What is OPES? And, and stuff like that. So basically, let's look at it this way. I have a company. I'm a, I'm a young entrepreneur. Maybe I'll be able to secure like maybe $200,000 to start business, you know, from, from what do you, from maybe, yeah, maybe seed fund. And uh, I need to, for me to do that, I need to, I mean, for me to start business, I need to buy a server, maybe a server of maybe $36,000 and, uh, you know, get software license and stuff like that. At the end of the day, I have spent like maybe $150,000 upfront without, even before starting business. Because I need, if I'm using virtualization, I need capital expenditure, expenditure from day one. I need to, I need to make provision. I need to buy a lot of things from day one. Okay. And even as time goes on to maintain it, the operational cost is kind of high. But when you look at public cloud, I don't need to start with, with high price. Do you get my point now? ORDB, for instance, ORDB, you look at, look at, let's look at this, this scenario. Maybe you have a, you are selling African food in Canada and you want to set up like e-commerce site, like people can make order, you want to place it there, you can make order and you get delivered to them. With cloud computing, you can just spin up an EC2 instance, just one EC2 instance server. If I'm Microsoft, I mean, AWS will give you, will give you almost 200 or something you know, hours free. You spin it up, you develop your application, your e-commerce application, and you deploy it there, and it started working. Maybe you didn't even pay one dime. Maybe you have somebody who helped you to develop the application, and you just deploy it. And it started working. That shows that from the one, you don't, you don't make an expensive investment upfront. No, you just do something little, and it started working compared to when you're supposed to set up your server yourself, you know, do all this kind of thing. So in this kind of, me, in this situation, you have low capital expenditure. And even when it comes to the operational cost too, you are not making, a, you are not making expenses upfront. You pay as you use. So for instance, if this month, maybe your, your, your bandwidth, your storage and everything you use, maybe because there's no market, you don't have to use a lot of storage. You don't have to use a lot of bandwidth or, or memory. And your, the cost that AWS will bring to you will be very, very small. The more that, okay, you have sales and everything, you know, you get it better. I mean, you pay more. So it's more or less like you are not making a huge investment upfront that we don't know whether it's going to build result or not. You only pay for what you use. If the market is good, you pay good. If the market is not good, you don't pay, you don't pay, you pay small. So this makes cloud computing more competitive and innovative, you know, friendly for startups, for startups. And uh, now we talk about scalability. When you talk about scaling up, there's difference between scaling up and scaling out. 
Now, when you are scaling up, you are adding, you are adding physical resources, like physical resources, like storage, like hard drive, like uh, you know, RAM and stuff like that. That is what called scale up, scaling up. So, but when you talk about scaling out, you can, you might not add physical resources, but at the same time, scale your infrastructure. Do, do you understand my point now? You, you, don't need to, you don't need to add like physical, res I mean, physical resources, but that is what we call, you know, vertical and horizontal scaling. But that, that is not, I don't want us to, to get deep, uh, deeper into that. But the simple explanation is that when you scale up, you are adding like a kind of an overhead, like, you know, physical, you know, resources for you to say, okay, you are using a virtualization, maybe, uh, let me see, a, a VM, I mean, virtual machine of maybe, maybe two or three before, for you to scale up, for you to add more, you might want to add more RAM, more storage and whatever. Well, in the case of cloud, you can still be using the same thing, but have a way of managing it in such a way that you scale up, you scale down, and uh, you are still within that resources that you are using. For instance, maybe in the morning, like weekends, maybe weekend you use a lot of resources because a lot of people make orders from your platform. Maybe with this, based on the nature of your business, you don't have that much. And it has to have a way of balancing out those things. Then workload, they are stateful. Stateful is like, like, like I said, it's something uh, you know, close to scalability. Stateful is like, either you like it or not, you, this is what you get for virtual machines. But in the case of stateless, it can be, it can be maybe two instances in the morning and maybe one instances in the night. So the, the servers are consolidated. They are actually the idea is data center. You can't do anything about it. But in the case of cloud, they are on demand. You only use what you demand, what you, are, what you need at a particular time. So for tenancy in virtualization, it's a single tenant. If you have a single virtualization, is being used by a particular, maybe a bank or organization, is for that organization. But in the, I've explained this, but in the case of cloud, multiple users or organization can be using the same virtual machine at the back end without them knowing. So these are the, these are the difference between virtualization and cloud computing. Uh, if I may ask, uh, okay, before we ask any question, now, virtualization software vendors, I mentioned VMware as a company the last time. Zen is another, uh, it's another, let me say this is a technology, it's not more, it's not, it's not a vendor, sorry. This is a technology, this is a technology that powers, uh, you know, virtualization, but these are vendors. These are, these are vendors. We have a, VMware as a company, you can Google them, Oracle Virtual, Virtual Boss, and we have Microsoft Hyper-V. Any question? Excellent, nice. Um, Adebi, please go for it. Please, if you have a question, raise your hands up, okay? Adebi, can you hear me? Okay, he's there. Yeah, My question ahead. has been answered. Thank you. Oh, okay. okay, nice. Please go ahead, John. Okay, so now if we don't have any questions, so I said, so for those of us that were asking that they were trying to install a virtual machine and stuff like that, fine. You can you can go to VMware website and download VM, uh, VMware. Now, one of the reasons why you see those of us in tech and uh, <laughs> we have been here for some time, being, you know, favored, like we favor Oracle Virtual Boss is not because we have share in their company. No, <laughs> it's because uh, my experience shows that VMware is very heavy. When I install it on my system, it kind of slow down the system somehow. I don't know, uh, but I know, I know reason why it's not for today. But Oracle Virtual Bus kind of light. So it's your, it's your choice. And Oracle Virtual Bus is free. 
but uh, VMware, they can be asking for keys and stuff like that. So Microsoft, if you have micro, if you buy Microsoft uh, server license, uh, Hyper-V is, is included in it. So it depends on what you get. So, but if you have one already, you don't need to install another one. You, you're only, you know, consuming more resources by doing that. So now these are the guys anyway. So, yes. So if you look at this, uh, these two refs, I don't know whether you will get this uh, or whether you've gotten this, uh, uh, this slide, but if you, this guy, this the guy that owns this website did some job here. If you are, okay, if you want to install, you know, virtual boss, you have step, very good step by step by step. I don't need to reinvent it. And if you are installing, you know, VMware, you can follow this, this guy. Uh, yeah, so that is, this. Uh, if you get it, you can just follow through. But, uh, so I think on that note, I am finishing up, yeah, Is my class. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Uh, yeah, thank Fant you. Fantastic, great job, man. I love thank, this. Thank you, sir. I love this, I love so, this. So the only thing, Mr. Osita, if you want me to just maybe use like five minutes to ramp them on like installation, I'm not going to do a full installation, but just ramp them up on what they can, when they are doing this, just to give you, them a touch. Yeah. I can quickly do that. Absolutely, that absolutely. No, go ahead. Okay, sir. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, uh, you know, okay. what is if, we, if we can wrap up by 9.15, that would be great. So we still have some time. Take okay. like 10, 15 minutes for that. That's fine. Good, good. Yes. Okay, so please just look at my... Can you post this, the link to the, slide, um, to the chat box? Okay, you want me to do that right away? Yes, so you, yes okay. go, ahead, go ahead and post on the chat for them. Okay. Yes. Okay, let me do that right away. Okay. Cool. That is done. So let me just uh, let me just uh, take you through what you can what you can do. Okay. So uh, number one, you can can you see my screen, please, everyone? Yes, we can. Okay, so for instance here, yes. uh, let's just go, you can just do um, small Google and say uh, Oracle Virtual Boss download. Okay, and uh, we go to this page. Come on. Why that one is going on, I can do uh, VMware, uh, VMware download. So this is, when you get to this place, you will see this is Oracle Virtual Boss. You can just click here and it will take you to the download page. And uh, for this, you can go to, this download the VMware workstation. Um, yeah, so here you can do pro, and here you can do this for Windows. This for Windows and this for I mean this for Windows and this for Linux. So you can you can download all these guys there. But if you download them, sometimes. It they only give you like a, for VMware, they will only give you like 30 days free trial. You know, I don't want to go beyond that. So for this, if for Apple Virtual Boss, you, if you are using Windows, you can download from here, Mac OS, uh, you can, you can get, you can get that done here. Okay. So for me, I have downloaded a, Oracle Virtual Boss here. So if I double click on it, I can see yes. And you see, it's just simple. It's just like straight through, you know, installation. But you want to note this place, this location, like see where the, the software is, uh, is installed. You just want to note that down. Maybe you might need it. Every other thing, you just leave it the way it is. And you say next, you can, you can say next now. This is 
when you say do you want to do this, you just say yes. So here, when you just install it to finish it. So when you install, but because I've installed it before, when you finish that, if you see an icon on your desktop, this will follow through that step this way. So when you do that, then when you click on this icon here, it brings you here. So if this brings you here, then you can go here and say new. You want to create a new uh, a VM, a virtual machine. I can call this, uh, I can say uh, my lab one, my lab one. And uh, I want to see what kind of operating system do I want to install on it? Is it Windows? Is it Solaris? Is it Mac OS? Maybe I want to install Mac OS. I can, then the version. Is this 64 bit? Yes. I can say next. Uh, create a virtual machine memory. I can say, okay, I want uh, maybe 4 GB RAM on it. Let's create hard disk. Yes, I say create. And uh, I can say, you know, VDI. Make sure you always use VDI at least for to start with. But by the time you research, you know what VH and uh, VMDK means, then you can you can do that. So we talk about hard disk here. I can say, okay, dynamically allocate, you know, this disk if it runs out of space. It, it does some stops and then uh, now I have 20 GB of my storage, my disk space allocated and I can say create. So you can see it's created, right? This is a, a virtual, you know, a virtual machine, you know, being created. So now that I created it, I can now go here and uh, say, I want to install an operating system on it. So then if I want to install an operating system on it, I will go here. Uh, where are you? I will go to storage, click on it. And I will, I will click on this empty. This is more or less like your, you know, in those days, if we want to install an operating system, we put a disk, a CD, a CD into the ROM. So now they virtualize the ROM. Now you don't <laughs> you don't need to have virtual, I mean, physical uh, uh, ROM. So you can what? You can click on it and go here. Then go to where that Mac OS is downloaded. For instance, this is this is not Mac OS. This is uh, Ubuntu. So I can I can do that, and uh, I will say okay. So that is that. So if I want to install, I'll just say start. The installation should start. But you know, you know, it's Mac OS, so maybe it's going to stock. Yeah, I'm just uh, somebody might say something. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Install the OS operating system on this um, virtual machine now. Mm -hmm. Would we have already in downloaded Microsoft and um, um, Linux and all those operating systems we want to use on this version? Yes, of yes. You must have uh, downloaded it. Yes, that is. Uh, for instance, if I want to, you know, after downloading my uh, Oracle Virtual Boss, mm -hmm. I can go ahead and say maybe I want to download the. Uh, uh let me see windows maybe windows 11 you know uh download sorry so if you know it's windows 11 you want to you want to install you can just say okay windows 11 you know windows 11 you you download it you download here okay if it's a uh, linux maybe you want to you want to install uh red hat uh, linux So, uh -huh. let me let me get it right. Red Hat Linux download. Okay, you must have go, gone here to go and, to go and download all these guys. Download them. You can see this is uh, 8.0. Red Hat 8.0. You can just do this is 64 bit. Download it here. You know, every, okay. so you must have downloaded like like I did here. Okay. If you but look at this, 
I downloaded Ubuntu server here. Let me desktop and server already. That was, I downloaded it. So you just navigate to that when you want to do that. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah. yeah, so after downloading it, we will now install it. We will only install on the VM, not on our, on our current um, laptops, right? Exactly. That's what you install on the VM that you install on top of your laptop. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Okay, good, yeah. So uh, that is that. I will not... Uh, uh, I will not do a full installation. I just give you like an idea of what uh, you should do. The what sorry, I is sorry to cut you short. Okay. So is it like now this Oracle Virtual Box? Is it is it the VM? Yes. Okay. It's the virtual software that allows you to create virtual machines. Okay. Good. Another question. So what I want to show you here is that, for instance, let's assume I finished that installation. And somehow, it's even almost finished, but somehow I don't want it anymore. Instead of me trying to you know, mess things up, if I install it on this, or maybe some other way, I'll just come down here and maybe go to file and say, sorry, machine. And I'll say remove, delete files. Everything is gone, just like that. You can see the way is more easier for those cloud companies to just, if somebody is not using it, they just remove it and what, create another one. They even automate processes. That's okay, immediately that person said, it's okay, I'm no more using it. Or his money has, maybe has paid that the money is, is just paid for one month. Even if it's one month, it, the process will just automatically remove it and create another, give it to another person. You see that? So I think with that, I will say I come to the to the end of uh, today's class, Mr. Osita. Yeah, great, great session, great session, John. Thank you, great, sir. Great session as, as usual. Thank you so very much, man. You're welcome. Um, sir. On Friday, you were able to break down, you know, uh, break down uh, hardware, security, storage, yeah. storage, and all that. Yeah. And today, here we are virtualization cloud computing you know th these are these are we're talking about it tech yeah. these are core you know core core areas for sure yeah. um for for most of us here you might not become a virtualization expert yeah. you might not work in the cloud computing environment but it's good to understand these things and that is why what, what this session this program is all about you know, as an IT person, it makes sense to have understanding of the different areas within IT. That makes you a well-rounded IT person. When there are conversations or people are discussing in the office, it, or it could be um, it, it could be anywhere where there are discussions, you should be able to you know understand what is being said, or even make you know make some comment. That is the essence of this. You know, so it's not really because some people might be looking at all this, they'll be like, ah, now so this ITB, ah, I beg, where I want to start from. No, it's not meant to overwhelm you. Not everybody will go into virtualization, and not everybody might even have need to do anything on virtualization. But knowledge is what? Power. When you have understanding of how some of these things work. Amazon, one company, but look at they are supporting millions of organizations by providing infrastructure to them. Instead of you to go and buy server, big server, and start looking for storage, where you, where you are going to put the server, where you are going to put all those. No, most organizations don't do that anymore. It saves you space. Just tell Amazon, I need five servers. Each of those servers, this is the specification. This is the requirement. 20 gigabytes, uh, 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 500 uh, megabytes. Give them whatever you want. It. That is it. Now, instead of Amazon to do it for you, they are now allowing you to do it yourself. That is what AWS is all about. You go in, with create an account, and set up instance, server, anything you want, create. They will now be billing you, small, small. Pay small, small. <laughs> And that's what we are talking about. 
instead of you to, you know, the one major good thing about it as well is the fact that it saves organization money. Think about it. You want to set up a big business, you are thinking about capital to buy big servers, to buy resources, memory, storage. These days, you don't need to think about those things. Amazon is already there. Google have, have got their own as well. Microsoft have got their own as well, Azure. What you simply need to do, create your account, go in there, choose what you want, put your credit card, and small, small, they will be billing you based on the resources you are utilizing. How easy is it to set up a business, set up a company without thinking about the huge initial capital required to set up infrastructure? Does that make sense for us? Hello, I want to say some yeah or nay. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Excellent, excellent. So it's important to understand these things. So when people are talking about cloud computing, it doesn't sound as if, uh, you know, maybe rain went to fall. <laughs> the cloud is rain. No, that is not it. You know, it makes sense to understand this concept, very important, so that you can have meaningful conversation. And when you're on a project and people are talking about these things, you're not lost completely. At least you're able to understand, okay? So I think we've wrapped up um, uh, this section. Next Friday, we are going to be moving into database. What is database? Most of us have heard of database before. <laughs> what is it, <laughs> right? What types of database do we have? And we're going to go into, you know, visualization. How do you visualize your data? There are so many things we need to talk about. That will be on Friday and Sunday, okay? Make it a date, use the same link. And please invite as many people as possible. Don't be, don't be selfish, right? You are getting insight, getting all this information, share with your networks. Let many people be aware. I was speaking with a lady yesterday that told me that she has been in Canada for the past 13 years. 13, one, three. And guess what this lady is doing? Customer service. That is what she's doing today. This is someone with years of experience back in Nigeria, now in Canada. 13 years. One, two, three, four, count. <laughs> 13. Unbelievable. Customer service. Salary of $45,000. And I will. Uh, I can't just, I can't just, I can't just understand. I had a lengthy conversation and she has decided that she will quit that job. She has decided that she will take, not quitting the job now, she's going to activate the necessary ingredients required for her to succeed. Success. It's not when you're earning 45,000. That is not what we have dreamt. <laughs> it cannot be part of the dream to come here and earn 45K. That's a minimum wage now. <laughs> and you're here for 13 years. I say, no, madam, this is unacceptable. Unacceptable, null and void. As the legal guys will say, no, this is null and void. It shouldn't even be heard of. By now, you should be the one mentoring the newcomers coming in. You can't be here 13 years and you are still at this level. No, please. And the truth of the matter is this, for some of us that probably you've been here, you might be telling yourself, oh, but I've just been here for three months. I've just been here for six months. See, time flies like anything else in this part of the world. Before you know what's happening, one month is, I've turned to one year. One year to two years. I was chatting with someone that I told, I don't think in Canada, the time here is up to 24 hours a day. I don't think so. Have you, have you realized that yourself? Things move so fast here. <laughs> in Nigeria or Africa, you know? You have enough time. I don't, I don't think so, truly. Yeah, but yeah. Before you know what's happening, ah, they don't break. Before you know what's happening, night don't come. What, what did they happen? <laughs> Things move very fast. And that's why you need to make the hay 
while the sun shines. Don't waste time. Because the more you say, I will, I will, one month we turn to one year, and one year we turn to three years. Okay? Activate the necessary coconut head and pivot. Make it happen, and you see yourself succeeding. Okay? For any questions, clarifications, I'm dropping the email info at blacktechhub.org. Is it properly spelled? Yes. Okay. And you need a phone call or you want to make a phone call, you can. I'm also dropping a phone call here. Six four seven four hundred three one two zero. That is the official Black Tech uh, phone number. When you call, I'm, I might be the one to pick or some other career advisor. So the email is there, the phone number is there. Note it that let us encourage as many, you know, to learn and to come out from that comfort zone. Comfort zone, nothing grows in the comfort zone. That's why it's called comfort. <laughs> you are comfortable. Nothing grows there. If you want success, there must be discomfort. Without discomfort, success cannot be assured. Okay? Thanks, everyone. I have five minutes, just five. And I will entertain just three comments or questions. Three, only three. If there's anyone else that have any questions, it could be related to this topic or something else. Or it could be your own personal situation and you want to share. Three persons, let me take that and we call it a night. Anyone? Or well, are we shy? <laughs> Questions, comments? Am I just speaking to myself? Wait. Is my mic still working? Can you hear? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Okay, you, great. You, we can hear you. Yes. <laughs> I'm already clapping for you. For I, wa I, I, I want to be sure that I'm not speaking to myself alone. <laughs> Just three individual, please. Let's 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 get. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, Dolapa, please go ahead. Good evening, Osita, and thank you, John, for the presentation. I was a bit lost this evening, to be honest, but I know that um, I had to step away for like fifteen minutes, so that was why I didn't even know which part to ask questions. So. I was thinking that ahead of the class on Friday, something to do will be to watch the video again and just go through to, to add that because it is it is getting a bit techy, you know, in fact, actually very techy for me. And I'm like, I'm not sure I want to go on along this part, but I'm willing to 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 put in the work and just take it on there. So thank you very much. It's um do you would you say that that is a good way to go on a new or also go watch those come to video YouTube videos you shared ahead of the Friday and then if you still have questions then come and ask them excellent thank you thank you Dora. well I appreciate um I appreciate thanks for those comments just like I said even if you are going into business analysis you might find yourself in a project that is cloud computing project, or it could be virtualization or data migration or network infrastructure or digital transformation. You, uh, you will not be the one that would tell those in the team how to go about these things. Everybody get their lane. So the solution architects are there. Project manager is there. Everyone else have got things to do. Your own is there as a part with what? Requirement gathering, documentation, facilitation, and all those things. But it makes sense that you have understanding of what that particular project is all about. Because if it's a virtualization project and you don't even know what is virtualization, it becomes difficult to even make sense of what has been talked about. And that is the sense of all this. So don't take it to be too techy. 
think, look at it from, and that's why I love when John was talking about the business side of cloud and virtualization. Why organization do or go towards those routes? Why a business will decide to rent a space from Amazon Cloud instead of building their own data center? So you look at it from business angle, that helps you too. Because as a business analyst, sometimes they might ask you for recommendation where you have to do research to do recommendation to the business. I just had a session with one of, with one of us, a committee member. She has a presentation to be tomorrow. And one of the things she wanted to clarify she presented a case study to me just this afternoon for one hour. I went through that with her. Two different systems. And the organization is asking her to make recommendation on how they should proceed. Whether to do away with one of the system, which is a homegrown system, while the other one is a cloud-based system, there are pros and cons. She presented it and I dissected everything with her. At the end of the day, she made sense of everything. Pick one system. It's just like a business case. Where you are working, they might ask you to put together a business case for a particular need. How do you do that? That is where research comes. That is where networking comes. Reaching out to people that can guide you. And that is community. My, my schedules are super, super, super tight. But the moment I saw that, and she told me that presentation is tomorrow, I, I knew I need to jump into this because she needs to look good tomorrow in front of our managers. That is what the Indians do that makes them succeed in tech and everywhere. They have people behind. Blacks, Nigerians, we can do the same. Let's be there for one another. If the world is against us, we cannot be against ourselves, <laughs> okay? All right, let me stop here before the voice will go completely. <laughs> Ayo, Ayo, go for it. Okay. Um, it seems there, there are two Ayos here with us. Okay. So, um, no, no, if you can go, go, go. Okay. So, um, you know, a lot of here, a lot of us here are, um, um, how would I put it now? getting older, and this seems like um, adult, <laughs> adult education for most of us. So um, my, in trying to understand uh, the presentation, one thing I wanted to ask is um, for the virtualization, do we really, what do we really need to use it for? That's one. And secondly, um, that's us being individuals right now, not businesses. Then secondly, um, where does this lead to? Do, would this lead us into um, going for um, cloud computing training? And if it does, which one does um, Black Tech offer? Okay, okay, that's a great question. Before I answer that question, can everyone please subscribe to this channel? This is a free program. People come in here getting stuff free. The, the, the IT operations guy that is responsible for the YouTube, the guy is not happy. He told me today that it's not going to be uploaded this anymore. <laughs> I told him, calm down. He said, how do we have 100 and something people? At the end of a session, only about five or six subscribe. That is not good enough. Can we use one minute? One minute. Click on the link on the chat. Click. In fact, what the guy told me this afternoon is also that you know this is this is the same thing about Nigerians. Nigerians they don't like. <laughs> I said no before. Don't go there. In our community, we don't talk about Nigerians. What we have is people that are completely renewed. That is why Nipka. If you're a member of Nipka, you see people are selfless. That is our community for you. So I don't even want like, like anybody to talk about the fact that Nigerians don't like sharing. If not for anything, we have demystified that particular, you know, narrative. In Nipka, people share. You are looking for referrals, people will refer you. 
easily. That is what we want to do. Change what? The narrative. Please, everybody, we are 114 here. The guy what we would like to see, 100 addition to whatever number he has there. Click on the link and subscribe in one minute before we continue. Please, because you will say that I don't talk about this enough. I say, see, you better come and talk. Me, my voice don't, don't cry finish. <laughs> Please guys, one minute, one minute. It doesn't cost you anything. Encourage the team behind the uploads. Somebody is doing this. It's work that somebody is doing. This is not what Osita does. Osita doesn't have time to upload things on YouTube. It's not one of my work. But the people doing it, they will be encouraged to see that what they are doing, people are watching it and they are subscribing to it. If you are not subscribing, it means it's not valuable. And they will stop. So please encourage them. Please. I'm not looking at the channel now, but by Friday I will confirm if you guys have really done it. Don't just subscribe. Can you also share with your network? Copy and share on WhatsApp groups where you belong. Share to people as well. Let's get more black people to be aware of all these things and help many people come out, for, out from that comfort zone. Now, Ayo, coming to your question, virtualization can be used in different ways. There are so many use cases, so many use cases. For example, Black Tech DevOps class started yesterday where we had about 30 students. DevOps is one of those high demand area in tech today. It's about automation of business processes. It has some element of coding. It has some element of technicality. It's about agility. It's about how can a business do things very, very, very fast instead of the manual way of doing things. How do we, you know, go through processes and operations and automation very, very fast to support the world business? Virtualization can be deployed in that scenario as well. That is why one of the topics they are going to be doing is cloud computing. They started with Linux, Linux operating system. Gradually, they will get to cloud computing, containerization, Ansible, Docker, Kubernetes, and all those jargons. They will deal with it. You as an individual, you might have a laptop. That laptop is a Windows-based laptop. And you have a need to set up a lab. What is a lab? An environment where you want to practice. Like our cybersecurity students, sometimes they have need for lab. You don't want to set up lab on that your Windows system. That is where virtualization comes in for you. You can what? Virtualize your computer, which is more like partitioning or more like isolation, isolating what your laptop have with another environment so that you can do your lab in that environment. There are so many softwares today. Like when I started my career in ERP, SAP, the first thing I learned to do was to virtualize my computer. Because when you are done with your training, in fact, before the training, you'll be given a software to install. That software installation, you have to do it in a virtualized environment. So you need to install uh, a virtualized environment because you need an operating system to work. You cannot just install it on your machine. When you do that, you are going to wear down your laptop entirely. That is why you want to virtualize. So that that virtual machine, which is like a separate environment, can be utilized for the purpose of that new software. So inside that software, I have to now create further partition for my, what I call, development environment, quality assurance environment, and production environment. Inside virtualization again, I can create three. So I will do my configurations in development, move it to 
quality assurance server inside the virtualization, test it. If it's working well, I move it to production. If it is not working well, I go back to development, make all the development changes, then take it to testing. I'm not sure if I'm communicating. Are you? Very, very well. Yes. So in, in any implementation, software implementation, for instance, you don't just implement and move to life environment. You have to move towards a testing environment. So each of these environments are servers on their own, separate, separate environments. That is one of the key area where you can apply virtualization. The development will be on its own. Anything you are doing there will be on its own. It's not going to touch the quality assurance. Quality assurance will be on its own. Production will be on its own. Then, but there is a tool that you can use to move the changes across. When you finish in one, you use that tool to move to the other. You are done, you use that tool to move to the other. If you don't move, everything will remain in that independent system. Does that make sense? Makes sense. Excellent. Okay, final question. You did not answer the second question. There were two Sorry, questions. second one, you talked about programs. Yes, if you want to, okay, first of all, Black Tech have a, about 10 different programs that we deliver today. I would say they are in high demand tech areas from agile, scrum, business analysis, data analysis, virtual, uh, cloud computing, software engineering, and so on and so forth. All these are tough in demand programs and they are all well delivered by experts. Someone like John is a faculty with Black Tech. He is the lead faculty for DevOps. And all these programs, the minimum is three months. They are not the kind of program that people do two days. After two days, you carry certificate and you say, I am a cloud computing engineer. No, you must get your hands dirty. Even if it's business analysis that you are doing with us, that doesn't involve much technicality, you must do a project with us. Our emphasis is on skills, not on theory. We will teach you the theory, but you must learn the project. Our current business analysis class started January 29. The students have been divided into groups, each group with a project manager and a developer. They will go through projects end to end, work with all the tools, JIRA, conference, or everything. At the end of the day, they produce a solution. When you are done, it is difficult. Sorry, it is not difficult for you to get interview and you are now looking, you don't know what to say, right? You have internalized your learning and it's easy to talk about it. That is the gap that many people are having. Some people will just do training, six weeks, theory, and they think that's the end. No, if you get into a project, they will not be asking you what is virtualization <laughs> or what is business analysis. No, you got to do it. So I'm telling you, even if you don't want to do a program with Black Tech, any program you are doing in tech, make sure there is project component embedded in that program. I have had thousands of people complain. Hundreds call me on phone, the same problem over the years. Lack of depth, lack of confidence. Why? There's no scales. Okay? So I will drop the link and you will see all the programs that we offer. Some, most of them started in January, February. Next cohort will be starting in April for most of them. So you see all the programs. Some of them you can register right away. The ones you cannot register, send an email and indicate interest. And once it's out, email will be sent to you as well. Somebody is asking for business analysis. That one is starting 16th of April. As of today, 23 people have registered already for that class. And it's starting 
16th of April. So it's one of the very, very good programs if you don't have tech background and you are stuck in customer service. Please get out from that comfort zone and do yourself good. The average or minimum salary for a BA is $80,000. 80, that's minimum. We have members, some of our students, earning 9,500. There's one that I did is reference $110,000 business analysis. There are possibilities. Some are getting two offers, two. So please do yourself good to leave that comfort zone so that you can, you know, you can actualize your dream here. Ayo, I believe I've more than answered your questions. Any other question? The last one, please. Yes. So I have a question. Mr. Sita, can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? OK, OK. Yeah, uh, thank you so much for the cloud computing class and uh, virtualization. So I just wanted to ask you a question about career like path for that. So what background you sort of background you think someone can have if someone wants to move from maybe like supply chain experience to like maybe the cloud computing, like what sort of you know background or what kind of sort of stuff you can have to move towards that cloud computing? Yeah, so there are a lot of use cases, just like I mentioned. Uh, the, the essence of this program is more like about teaching, answering questions and helping you. We did not really embed the aspect of career into it because we have done a program called TriTech that we started January 12th to February 12th, where we demystify each of these areas and we talked about the career path. So feel free to go to Black Tech YouTube channel and look for TriTech videos. If you click on playlist, you will see videos. There's videos for testimonials. There's one for master classes. There's one for TriTech. And there's one for this IT foundation. That's what the operations guys have done. Put everything in buckets. So if you go through that TriTech, you will see different IT areas, top demand areas, including cloud computing. You will see discussions about career path and everything else. But to answer your question, yes, you can leverage, you can leverage uh, experiences in cloud or virtualization to go into cloud computing, AWS cloud computing. Cloud computing engineers are in top demand today. Top demand, top demand. I have somebody in my team. The guy has, is on $120,000 because of the cloud. He was a business analyst. After five years, he decided to make a change and he picked skills in cloud computing. Wrote the practitioner exam, which is the basic one, very easy. Wrote the solution architect exam, and that is it. Today, that guy is on 120K with a career pathway to write more because AWS have about 12 certifications. Depending on the route you want to go, you can decide to move along those routes. So there are opportunities, opportunities are bound. It's all about us to open up your mind and take action. Stop procrastinating, saying tomorrow, next year, next, no, right now, now is the time. You take decision, Take action next year, you'll be happy that you take that decision. Okay, thank All you. Right. So. You're welcome. Um, Osita, you guys, the one setting the exam for these courses after undergoing the training with you guys. Now, there are two exams here for most of our programs. At the end of the program in Black Tech, you will go through evaluation test, which is you know just to test you basically. Because Black Tech will also give you a certificate of accomplishment at the end of the program. And as you know, we have partnership for, with more than 15 organizations, including CompTIA, IIBA, and so many others. We give you that certification, which is recognized, okay? But in the actual certification, for example, you want to do 
AWS Solution Architect Certification. That is certification that is administered by Amazon, not Black Tech. Okay? Or you want to do Security Plus certification. That is administered by CompTIA, not Black Tech. Okay? I hope that answers that. Or you want to do CISSP. That is administered by ISC Square, not Black Tech. So every organization of vendors have got their certifications. So depending on what you want to accomplish, our training is to help you with skills. Our training's emphasis are not on certification, except if we are saying that this training is for certification. Just like we have PMP bootcamp, that is for PMP certification. CBAB bootcamp, you know that one is for CBAB. Okay, but most of our programs are on projects, practicals, and skills acquisition. Wow, I didn't know I would survive up to this hour. Somebody said, I am trying to register for the IDAP training, but it's not going through. Okay. Um, Ade, Adebola, yes, it's not going through because the team have not uploaded the link for registration yet. Data analytics is still ongoing. They started 5th of February. The next cohort will be starting, I think, 30th of, of April. Link for registration will be up probably by next week or next two weeks. But what you can do is to send email, send email to Black Tech so that the team will send to you the moment the link is, is launched. Okay? Adebola, can you hear me? All right, any yes, other question? Thank you. Yes, please, just send email to info at blacktech.org, info at blacktech.org. I mention what you need. The team will bookmark it. And once it's available, they will send it out. Most programs will be, next quote for most programs will be starting in April because most of the classes are like three months. So it is every quarter, okay? Thanks everyone. God bless each and every one of you. Olumide, you have a question? Yes, please. Thank you very much. Please, um, just do you have any program on cybersecurity? Yes, we do. Okay. The current class have 65 students in the current class. When it started is the next one? Okay. 5th of February. Second one is going to be starting probably 7th of May. We haven't okay. firmed up yet, but it's going to be beginning of May. That's when the second one will be starting. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Then another thing, guys, if you have not joined NIPCA and Black Tech, please try and do that. Let me paste that of NIPCA. That is the sister community to Black Tech. It's a place you want to be where people encourage each other with, with tons of resources. The link I've just been pasted as well. Complete the form and an admin will add you into the Telegram group. It's a powerful community and you need to be there. Share resources, communicate, network, collaborate, and support one another to excel. So I'm interested in the SAP training. I don't know if you... No, we, we don't have SAP training at the moment. Okay, okay. Yes, but you can send personal email to me and I'll provide you with resources that will guide you, okay? Okay, sir. Excellent. All right, everyone, have a very good night. God bless you, and have a good week. See you on Friday. Cheers. Bye. Good night. Thank you, Sita. God bless you.